Okay, we've covered the transformer, we've covered the rectifier, and we've covered this filtering section where we took the pulsating DC voltage and we turned it into a smooth DC voltage with a, with a slight ripple on the top. So now what we want to do is we're going to take off any high frequency noise from that. So this capacitor here, being a very large capacitor, could only handle low frequency signals, in other words, this ripple voltage, which is 1 50th of a second. So we can handle that, that's why it's so large. So we can handle and fill in those spaces. But what it can't handle is very high frequency noise. So we need a much smaller capacitor for that. That's what this 0.22 microfarad capacitor does. That will take off any high frequency noise. The reason we want to take off any high frequency noise is it could interrupt with the way the regulator works. So we want to make sure that that signal going into there only has a ripple voltage on it and nothing else, well, as much as possible. We want to get rid of any noise from this as much as we can. So that's the purpose of this 0.22 microfarad capacitor. So we'll just cover up the filtering now. So now we're at the point where we've got the ripple voltage. We'll assume we've taken out all of the noise. So we've left, so this capacitor has done its job and it's filtered out all of the high frequency noise. So now we enter the regulator. Now, if you look at my uh, video, on the linear power regulator, I'll try and put a link to that on this page or in the comment section, then you'll get a good idea of how they work. If you just watch that, be, that, that will give you an idea. So I'll assume you've watched that and you're back here now again. So now you know that on the outside of this, we've got a really smooth DC voltage, but we've got two more capacitors. In fact, we've got a very large capacitor right after the regulator. It's 100 microfarad capacity. Might think why have we got that large capacitor on, on the output? Has, hasn't the regulator done the job? Well it has, it's produced a nice flat DC voltage but if we stick a load on this and the load and for example say the lead's very long then the voltage could drop depending on how long the lead is so we might not have 18 volts on it, it might, be dro it might droop. Now to stop that from happening so that the load could, you know, for example the piece of equipment we put on there could draw more power and less power so you could end up with actually the regulator not actually being able to supply the constant voltage so this electrolytic capacitor which is quite large here 100 microfarads that acts as a reservoir the voltage at the top of this is always the voltage on the output and if there is any excessive pull on the load so instead of that causing problems with the regulator what it'll do is it'll have the same voltage, so if there is a pull on the load, then it's, it'll be taken from this capacitor. So that's why we've got a large capacitor on this, on this side. And it's the reason it's an electrolytic capacitor as well, because all large capacitors generally are replaced with electrolytics. On this side, the capacitor is much smaller. We don't need electrolytic here now. Now, why have we got another small capacitor on the output? Well, finally, this small capacitor on the out output, again, will get rid of any noise. It will get rid of any radio noise or anything like that on the line. So that's 0.1 microfarad, pretty standard size for that kind of thing. So that's the whole circuit really. So let's just have a quick look at the values of these components. And, and uh, well, I've kind of gone through the values of the components, but just finally, just looking at this, we can see how I've just labeled some of this down here. So if we bring that up a bit so we can see it all. Um, we got C1 and C2. That was our decoupling capacitors. They're large electrolytics. You can buy those. Um, now C3, C4, and C1 and C8. You can just buy, I would buy those small blue ceramics for those. The important thing with these, and these again are electrolytics, so it, the parts are, 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 are it, it's, it doesn't matter whether you use, what, what sort of ceramics you use. The important thing here for this power supply is that you make sure that all the capacitors are at least 35 volts rated so they all want to be able to withstand 35 volts not that they will ever get to 35 volts but it just gives it a nice safe margin and you know the price of 25 volt cap caps and 35 volt caps is probably negligible there's probably no difference in the price so you might as well get the the larger voltage voltage rated caps than the lower ones so just go you know if you, the bigger you can the bigger rated caps you can afford as long as the size of them is not too big and then just use those so that's all the caps and then finally we've got the diodes the diodes are just four im4001 diodes pretty standard diodes you can actually buy a whole rectifier unit 
if you want without having to buy four diodes but I just used four diodes for mine the regulators are LM2940 CT these are the ones I used um, they're the ones that are commonly used at the moment kind of you know not going to go obsolete because they're quite new types so they're good they're very good that they also dis define what kind of capacitors you should use so if you look at the data sheet you'll see they actually define these capacitors for them and the bottom the negative supply regulator is lm2990 t stroke 15 i've written that down here so uh, yeah and, and actually i've written here as well which is quite interesting i've written the voltage range for the regulator so the output voltage is designated as 15 volts so actually yeah i mean this regulator does actually regulate it at 15 volts so they've got 18 on the input it actually regulates it down to 15 so when you look at the the output voltage on here i've started with 18 volts now the regulator takes that 18 volts and drops it down to plus or minus 15 volts so you need that little bit of gap there for the regulator to do its job yeah so it's taking the 18 volts and a couple of volts have been used up wasted if you like uh, they've just been used up within the regulator so you end up with this nice fixed plus or minus 15 volts and here it says the output voltage is 15 volts the input now here's the interesting thing the amount it can use up so you can Put your, you can make your input voltage so you can actually use different transformers for this I've just used this one the 18 volt one but you could actually use us you know down to a 17 volt transformer so it can go from 16.75 to actually 26 so you could have a 26 on the output as well so that's the range it can cope with you know but if you're going a higher voltage you're putting more you're putting more heat into this so as you get close, you know, if you're getting up to 26 volts on here, it's got to go 26 down to 15. You've got to get rid of a lot more heat. Then you might need heat sinks on those then. So the best thing to do is to try and get as close within a couple of volts of the lowest setting. So this one's 16.75. So I picked 18. It would be nice if I could have got 17, but I couldn't buy the transformer at 17. I could only find these transformers that were 18 volts. So I went with 18. It's much better than going with the 25 volt one. The 25 volt one, I would have needed heat sinks to get rid of that extra difference of voltage there between, uh, you know, 20 and 15. Dropping from 26 down to 15 is a lot is a lot of power to to dissipate. But dropping from 18 to 15 is a lot less, obviously. So I went with the 18. It's all I could get. So I went with the 18. So that's quite interesting, that bit of information. So when you look at your data sheet, always have a look at that bit of information. So that's that really. So what I'm going to do now is just show you the wiring diagram of all this, just show you how that's all wired up. And then I'll show you the actual unit, the finished unit, and uh, maybe just show a few measurements of it just to show you that it's it actually works and maybe some uh, quick sort of like pictures of the inside so you can see what it looks like. And... Uh, that would be it then, so I'll just show you that now, I'll just show you the wiring diagram. Okay, so this is the wiring diagram and how I've physically actually connected everything up. I've used, um, firstly this transformer here, just show you what the transformer looks like. So that's the transformer I've used. You can see here it's 0 to 18, 0 to 18. What I've done in the actual unit is I've um, join those two up that becomes the center tap these two which is that part here you can see I've labeled that common down here and it's the same common as here so that there you can imagine that as all being one connected that's all connected the lead goes to there so that's your your common and on the other side of course this is your primary side here these two are connected together that gives you your this is 0 to 115 0 to 115 so just join those two together in here and that gives you your, your 240 which we use in the UK or 230 which we use in the UK so that's the transformer so that's that part there and then the other parts I kind of drawn them as best to scale as I can so you can see the sort of general uh, scale relationship between them but this is to give you more of a scale that's the actual size of the board I use there so that gives you an idea of the sizes involved so Although actually it's a bit smaller than that, it's about half the size of that to be honest. But that's the the, the uh, vera, type of Vera board I used. So uh, so you got your two, if you just look at this from the wiring diagram, C1 and C2 are just these two here. And you can see how I've physically wired it up. 
uh, C3 and C4 is these two here so you can see it's those two there and you can see how that's been fit. and here in the electrolytics I've actually labeled the plus side so you can see where they have to be so with these there's the plus and the plus there so you can see where they have to be the diode this rectifier section here the rectifier section that's these four diodes here and uh, then you get onto the the regulator the two regulators here that's these two units I've drawn here I have drawn them as oblong boxes but they look like transistors when you look at the actual photograph so that's those two long ob oblong boxes and then you've got your your other capacitors here so there's your your C7 and your C8 which is that one and that one C5 and C6 which is that one and that one C3 and C4 which is that one and that one so that's the whole thing that's actually the whole circuit and of course at the other end have an on off switch in the box itself in the physical box you've got an on off switch and then you have a, a a socket in the actual unit itself. You put a socket so you can plug in one of these three pin plugs into it. And uh, so that's that's it. That's, that's how you could build it. So that's the whole unit. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just show you some of the the pictures. And I'll show you a quick sort of demo of it being used. You know, measure some of the voltages so you can see that it's working. And um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, the box I've used, I've actually incorporated in a, 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 an oscillator inside the box so you can either run it <clears throat> and the oscillator actually needs a plus and minus 15 volts so instead of just having a plus and minus 15 volt linear supply for that one application I converted the box so you can use it for so you can use the plus and minus 15 for other applications but also the box doubles up as an oscillator so it's a sort of two in one box so when you see the box there'll be this extra controls for the oscillator but uh, all we'll be looking at in this particular video is the actual uh, power supply part of it so I'll, I'll, I'll go through that now all of that section of it some photographs and how it's being used <laughs> 